I was in my last area training a new missionary, Elder Adams. I was in Treleu in the southern part of the mission. Um, I don't know if it's still part of the Neokin mission. It might be part of the Comodoro mission. But anyway, uh, there was one night uh, that we were walking. You know, it got dark and it might have been 8 o'clock or 8.30. We're going to try to do one more visit and then return back to the apartment. We were kind of in a, a Toma area. Tomas are these kind of poor neighborhoods where you can kind of stake your own land and then just build kind of your own kind of like a shack. I mean, it, it depends. There's houses that are kind of like shacks where it's just kind of, you know, dirt floor, you know, maybe a tin roof and some wood or cardboard on the side. And then there's some other houses that, you know, are they've been around a little bit longer and they have a cement foundation, kind of more normal. But anyway, um, sometimes in the Tomas at night, it can be more dangerous, you know, um, lots of people who are unemployed, who need money. Some people resort to, you know, stealing. Met a few people like that on our mission, but um, anyway, we we're walking with a dog named Scurry, uh, this battered dog that we befriended. You know, we'd give it food, we'd be friendly to it, and it just loved us. It would follow us everywhere we went. And uh, yeah, um, we're, you know, I thought, well, why don't we go and visit this one family? There's a kind of a less active family. They live a little bit that way. You know, it's kind of a dark path. But there's, you know, one light, you know, near this big spooky looking factory. Uh, and then we go through the dark and then there's some more lights near this family. I'm like, well, it's a little bit dark, but, you know, I'm not afraid of the dark, you know. Not not like I used to be when I was a little kid. You know, I can, we can do this, especially with Scurry. We've got a dog. If anyone tries to attack us, he'll just attack them. You know, he'll scare them away. Who wants to approach two men with a dog? Um, <laughs> anyway. So we go walking down this kind of dimly lit path and uh, then from behind this big, you know, factory, you can see this, this person walking towards us. The thing that was a little troublesome, they're walking pretty quickly and they're walking directly at us, which is kind of awkward. Like, you know, if it's the middle of the night, you see someone from the distance, they just walk straight at you fast. Uh, it didn't feel normal. So I was a little... But we kept on walking, and when he came up to us, we saw him. He was maybe 25, um, Caucasian, Hispanic guy, and uh, he was very drunk. There had just been a, a soccer game, and after lots of soccer games, you'll hear gunshots, and people will get drunk, and it can be a little bit more dangerous sometimes. They just like to party and are really into soccer. Anyway, this guy was very drunk. He was kind of cold out, and, uh, and he said... Give me your time. And, uh, you know, I was like, well, you know, we've, uh, we've got pamphlets. You want some pamphlets? And they're like, no, I want your tie. Give me your tie. Take it off. Anyway, we did. I tried to you know, avoid the situation. I'm like, hey, you want some bread? We could go to the panaderia and buy you a piece of bread. You're like, no, give me your tie. I'm like, okay, well, I better give him the tie because he could have, you know, a knife or a gun. You know, it'd be good to take it off. So I take off my tie. I hand it to him and then you know he puts it around him and he he's looking he's like ah, i don't know how to make the tie like how do i do this and so i can't remember how exactly i went but my companion elder adams you know he's new kind of innocent you know doesn't understand the language very well but he puts down his bag on the ground and he you know gets close to the guy and he he starts to tie the tie on the guy, like all nice and pretty. He's like, oh, there you go. And I was just like, oh, that's very charitable, very Christ-like. That was great. Um, and then he's like, give me your coat. And it was a kind of a winter coat, and it was kind of cold. It was getting towards the winter. And I'm like, oh, probably be good to have this coat as a missionary. And I don't know if we could really afford another one. And it's actually my technically my brother's coat that he used on his mission that he was letting me borrow. Um, and I'm like, oh, well, I'll get you some bread, you know? He's like, no, give me your coat. Anyway, so I'm like, oh, let's go get you some bread. We'll go get you some bread. So I just started walking. You know, I turned away. I started walking down, heading away from this man at a pretty good pace, you know? Uh, I left my companion, Elder Adams, hoping he would come. He actually did come eventually when he caught up. We, uh, when we turned around the corner where we were no longer in the site, I think the guy might have yelled something you know he was a little drunk I don't think he could have chased us very well because he was a little drunk but um anyway once we got around the corner we kind of booked it like we wanted to get you know away 
from anyone. You kind of want to avoid the situation. And it was dark. It was about time to go back to the apartment anyway. So we kind of, you know, weaved in between trees and ran back to the apartment and we were fine. Oh, I forgot to mention Scurry, our guard dog. Um, he was walking with us the whole time. But then when the guy was there, I looked down and I'm like, where's Scurry go? Um, you know, uh, and he was gone. Um, <laughs> anyway, it was funny. Uh, appropriate to his name though, Scurry, he scurried away. Um, anyway, <laughs> It was a fun experience, um, a good way to end my mission. You know, I, I got to be robbed, you know, on my mission, got, you know, lost a tie, nothing too valuable. Um, got to see my companion put on a tie nice and neatly on him. It was kind of funny. Um, nothing bad happened, but it was fun.